Welcome to another episode of Yeah, Uh Uh-Huh with Lisa, Aaron, and Phil. Mm -hmm. And we have another uh, client of Michael Stover, Mm -hmm. MTS Management, with us today. And um, his name is Tim Ty. So welcome to the show, Tim. Thank you. Yeah, welcome. Michael sends out some uh, uh, stuff occasionally, and uh, we pick from those uh, candidates. Offerings. Who, yeah, musicians, you know, singers and songwriters. If we like something, we'll go ahead and see if we can get them on. And Tim was nice enough to accept mm-hmm. our invitation. Mm-hmm. Um, so, Tim, we're uh, real close to you. You're in Dayton, right? Dayton, Ohio? Yes. Yeah. Um, are you lifelong Dayton resident? I am. Yeah. You know. I, I was surprised one time when uh, when I heard that Dayton was one of the more violent cities. Hmm. I don't know yeah. if America or Midwest or what. Yeah, I was really it's um, it one of the Perfect. one of the top ten I areas. Didn't realize it's Trash Dayton Day. Jeez, I'm not uh, sure. Not, no, know. no. I mean, we, we've got our share of crime. I, I'm not sure that it's much worse than any other city yeah, of the right, state. Right. Uh, you right. know, if you read if you read about Chicago and you you know you lived in another part of the world, you go. Well, people are just getting killed there all the time. But yet, right. if you live there, it really, you know, it's, it's, it's usually someone else's problem or it's going on somewhere where you're not. So, right, right. Right. Well, I mean, we ventured up to Dayton. Aaron and I went, I know we went and saw, I think we saw uh, the firm, so, in Dayton, maybe. Yeah. My, my dad worked in Dayton and drove from Cincinnati every day. So I've been up there a few more times than Phil probably. Yeah, but yeah, that was, I'm actually. I was a long haul up 75 every day for. Him. Yeah, you do yeah, it. Gets... <laughs> I'm Cincinnati, and Philip and Aaron are both Norwood. Yeah, which is. Oh, practically... Aaron wasn't born. Where were you born, Aaron? Um, Cincinnati, Deer Park. Okay. Yeah. Let's see. No, I was born. Um. Uh, uh, not Deer Park. Uh, Green Hills. No, Price Hill. Price Hill. Price yeah. Hill. My parents lived in. I believe it was Price Hill when I was born. Yeah. Although we could look it up, it was Little Turtle Lane that we lived on. I've been there to see the dragons. I enjoyed uh, that's a nice mm-hmm. little ballpark. It is. Did it, it still mm-hmm. sell out like it was? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's hard to get a ticket, right? It, it is. Although a lot of the ticket sales go to you know corporate sponsors, and a lot of times they don't use them all. So mm-hmm. if you know somebody who knows somebody, you can usually get tickets. Yeah. They just got free ones they're never going to use. Right. Mm-hmm. But, and you can kind of see the ball game outside the ballpark too. And they and they like to have those seats filled. They do. It, yeah. it always looks better if the seats are filled. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. We we also saw Weird Al Yankovic oh, yeah, there. Yeah, no doubt. That's sort of mm-hmm. so weird out. And, um, is there anybody else we saw up there? No. I don't think you and I have been up there for any of the mm-hmm. shows, but yeah. No. Mm-hmm. But it's a nice community, you know. We yeah. We ventured up there. We go past the Dayton Daily News. We know we're almost there when we see that building. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah, and we went up there. We stayed in a hotel. We saw a Weird Al. Did we do it? Yeah, we did a hotel. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I bet he was at the Phrase. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Yes, he was. That was a Phrase mm-hmm. Arena. And we ate at Uno's Pizza. It was one of the only Uno's Pizzas left yeah. in Ohio. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was good. I think it's the only one left in Ohio. Yeah. It was right across the street from the theater. So that made it nice. And it was close to the theater. Okay. So that made it pretty easy. I had wanted to, I, I had looked up like restaurants in the area and I was like, mm-hmm, who knows? Because I hadn't had deep dish pizza in, in forever. Yeah. And just every once in a while, you got to have a deep dish pizza. Yeah. But uh, Tim's not here to talk about pizza. Nope. So we're here mm-hmm. to talk about music. Yep. <laughs> um, he's a singer, mm-hmm. songwriter, guitarist. Mm-hmm. Um, his band, are you, you, you do sing in the band, right? Is, uh, some. Um, yeah, I took, I took three vocals on the new album. Right. Yeah, you're you're the voice. It's not the female voice, right? Well, there's more than one female voice, but yeah, I'm 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 obviously the male voice. Yeah. Right. So, um, uh, what's the makeup of your band? Oh, my band is basically sort of an ad hoc thing. When we need to do something, I just call the guys, and that's what we do. We don't play out on a regular basis. Available? 
So on this album, uh, who are the are the songs ad hoc or is it the album that's ad hoc? Well, I'm saying it's the instrumental. It's the personnel is ad hoc. Yeah, in other words, if you said who's in Midnight Sky today, I'd go, I'm not sure. Oh, okay. Gotcha. But if you said we got to do something in two weeks, then I could tell you who's gonna who's gonna be in it. We've got regulars and then people who kind of you know sit in and cool. Right. Okay. But this is the third album by Midnight Sky, right? I mean, so you've been doing right. this for a while. Um, and the name of this album that we're talking about today is last hope for the modern world, which is kind of provocative. I think, you know, that kind of resonates with a lot of people, I guess, you know, it's kind of a thing. Yeah. I, I like the title. I, I, I thought the title up probably two years ago. And uh, the last thing I did on this project was write a song called last hope for the modern world. It was, it was, I got it in just before we finished stuff. And somebody said to me, Tim, you need to, you need to write something upbeat. Because with that, with that title, who knows? Mm. So, yeah. so at the end of the chorus, it's last hope for the modern, love's the last hope for the modern world. So it, it is upbeat, I think. At the end, yeah. At the end. I, I'm you good said. with songs where the, uh, the music is kind of upbeat. You know, it, 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 there's like a little danciness. Even yeah. if the, uh, the lyrics are like, you know, depressing as all get out. So you like the cure. Kind of happy. <laughs> I'm good. What did you say, Aaron? What? I said, so you like the cure. Happy um, music and sad lyrics. I'm I'm okay with that. Born yeah. in the USA. Mm -hmm. There's an example for you. Yeah. Yeah. So you said you don't play out a whole lot. Do you mostly um, record in studio? Record in studio. I, I've been doing, especially since COVID, we've been doing a lot of stuff remotely. And yeah. uh, I got people all over the country and, you know, we record, you know, the drum parts and then we record bass parts and we just quit, so sort of mess with, mess with them until we get what we want. That's cool. Kind of like Steely Dan. I wish. <laughs> Steely Dan without Chevy Chase. Yeah. <laughs> yeah okay. Version about Chevy Chase. <laughs> can you, can you hear the Chevy Chase version? I mean, is it bad? It you keep kind of pointing I, that out. Only so. because Aaron didn't know that. Oh, I've got okay. like one piece of musical trivia Maybe that Aaron, Aaron, I caught Aaron on it. He okay. didn't know that Chevy Chase had played mm. for Steely Dan when they were in college. I doubt okay. if they even had an album out yet. They were just mm. college, you know, buddies. Buddies. Okay. And he was the drummer. Mm. He talked about it on, I don't know, Fly on the Wall or one of those shows that he was on. But, um, but your influence is, uh, you know, very... Uh, contemporary rock i guess um, a country uh tinged um some of i read an article that said some of your influences were not they weren't surprising they were like bob dylan tom petty yeah uh, brian wilson you know so the sound is kind of uh you know it, it's your own distinct sound it's it, 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 you know i guess it would fit in with kind of like an eagles kind of a sound you know yeah it's I think it's it's this album especially is is somewhat eclectic. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's there's stuff on there. Is at least one that's kind of a rockabilly song, and there's a like a line dance tune we put on there, and um, you know, like uh, Last Hope and Long Way Back to Town, even Forever Ends. I think those are all solidly country. Yeah, um, and I liked. I did like the the sound of. Uh, I, I got to tell you right now, you, you did the singing. I don't know, how, you know. I enjoyed the duet you did way out west. That was like yeah. the song. Like, Thank you. We can't start really going through my my mind, you know, when I even when I wasn't playing, you know, it, it stayed with me like an earworm. Mm -hmm. But I liked your singing on it. Your singing was like, I don't know, there was a rich tone to it. You know, it was, uh, you know, it it's easy to go Johnny Cash or whatever. But it's, it's oh, I've I've heard that reference a lot. That John Prine, and usually it starts with. You don't have to be a good. You don't have to good, have a good voice to be a good singer. And <laughs> so they usually do, use those as examples. And go, There's okay. a compliment for you. Yeah, right. <laughs> Back to Bob. Well, I understand. I, you know, I understand my limitations, and I've got. You know, you're the, like especially the female vocals. They, I think they've got great voices, a lot yeah. of range. I just have to keep things within that. Uh, you know, the, the the small range that I have, and then of course. The miracle of engineering stuff gets cleaned up. Mm -hmm. 
who did uh, who did that duet with you? Who was this, the female on that? Uh, somebody that somebody else knew. Um, frankly, I can't even remember her name. Never yeah. met her. That she's in. A, I think she's in Nashville, but I'm not sure. Okay, so you're definitely doing an electronic uh, kind of an electronic collaboration here. You kind of. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm working on a studio number right now, um, but it, it's doing doing it remotely really makes it more efficient. Um, yeah. You know, I don't have to schedule studio time. I don't have to schedule my time. I don't have to round up musicians. You know, I don't have to get an engineer because, you know, most of these people have day jobs. So it's not, it can be difficult to get everybody together. And then um, some people don't show up as prepared as they used to be. Um, anyway, yeah. you know, a lot of this performing going, I could be sleeping when it's happening. You know, there's no frustration for me. I'm not waiting for someone to show up. Right. So you don't have to yeah. rent a studio and you have somebody, you know, your groups all got to be there on time. And, and the guy's hung over from partying the night before. So he's not in there. Sometimes <laughs> or, they're not even hung over. They're still partying. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, you don't have to worry about all of those. Uh, uh, you don't have to herd those cats anymore. No. I mean, there's somebody. Just wait for your inbox to light up. That's yeah. right. Yep. Well, that's interesting. But the first, um, the first track on it is the title track of the album, right? Yes. Last Hope for the Modern Modern World. Mm -hmm. Tim has been kind enough to uh, let us play a few of these songs. So let's go ahead and play Last, Last Hope. Hope for the Modern World. Yep. Kids in the shadows, lips touching the night. Holding each other Cause it seems so right Come feel the music Get up and dance If you've got a better idea Now's your chance I ain't knocking science or a college degree I ain't knocking faith or diplomacy But will the world's all right that a lot of times on our album aaron's audio edibles that so it's good to good strategy to kick it off with a strong you know strong song yeah i every um the, all, all the albums that i put out i always the first song is always something strong because mm -hmm. like you know you want to get people's attention and that's what i'm trying to do right um as opposed to steve vi who likes to put the best song at number seven every time but he's steve vi that's true <laughs> <laughs> He's gonna he's gonna go out of the box every time. That guy is kind of slippery. <laughs> yeah, we did one on um, what was the name of that album, Aaron? Steve I album. Um, the one where Devin sings. Yeah, I think it was Sex and Religion. Sex and Religion. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that. Yeah, he he's a he's kind of a virtuoso, but uh, yeah, he's a he's a different kind of cat though, definitely. Steve I or Bye, yeah. yeah. Um. Mm -hmm. So have you? Uh, Let's talk a little bit about your uh, transition. You, you're not you're not practicing law now, right? Or are you? Sure. Oh, yeah, I am. You are. Yep. You're still okay. Um, so till he gets uh, it right. Till I get, <laughs> till I get it right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Are you a defense attorney or a prosecutor? Or? No, I'm. I do. I've done all that, but now I'm what's typically called a transactional attorney. I do real estate deals and estate uh, planning, that kind of thing. Okay. That's when I'm. I'm. I'm on jury duty and dealing with uh, that sort of thing yeah okay so can't say much more than that though right that's about all i can say yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's right <laughs> um 
So I was looking at, uh, I thought maybe with your lawyer, lawyer background, you know, when I was uh, doing a little bit of research on the show, I found out somebody, there was another Tim Ty out there that had been involved in the music business, hmm. but that's not you, right? I mean, he was Interesting. A, an agent. He was a, uh, um, Timmy, he, he went by Timmy Ty, I think. No, that's, that's not me. Yeah. Only my grandfather called me Timmy. <laughs> <laughs> um long way back to town uh, i like that one that, that you know that was a good one but i tell you i tell you what i really liked was on just wait because what the uh the way that that song was set up the, the way the the lyrical progression went um i was singing along with it and when she gets to the point where she says just wait she sang it in a different key than i would than i was anticipating and i thought that was interesting you know that that kind of changed it up a little bit you know, what I'm, you know what I'm talking about? when. Yeah, that was, I've had two singers named Nicole, and that was Nicole one. Mm -hmm. They're both great. They're, they're all over this album. Yeah. Uh, and I had, she wasn't the first, the first one. We this had some. lousy with Nicole's. Yeah. 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 The, the first singer, I just said, I, I just can't accept this. It's no good. And, and the producer, my co-producer was having some kind of a problem with Nicole. And I said, I don't care what your problem is, call her. Uh -huh. she did she did it i mean uh, that's not, it reminds me a little rent linda ronstadt you know with the, with the female singing i'll take that compliment yeah was mm -hmm. it was it um intentional to be so heavily you know not just one female singer you said but multiple mm -hmm. you know i mean did you well, imagine said, or is that kind of a call to arms yeah maybe it, they just have better voices than he does oh believe me uh <laughs> You know, it's I've I've always had a number of people to choose from, and um, the two Nicoles, and then there was on the first album I used uh, someone locally named Paige Beller, and those are those are the three best vocalists that, that I've had. You know, they just they seem to have a real good sense of my music and how to interpret it, and they don't stop till they get it exactly right. And I listen to stuff and say, God, that's great. You know, ah, 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 we're, we're going to have to do this one over. <laughs> I'm glad they feel that way because mm -hmm. I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. So they're in tune with the material enough where they'll, they'll have some input and stuff on it, right? I mean, yeah. And I, uh, I'm, a, I don't like people messing with the words. I'm, I'm a little bit uh, sort of jealous when it comes to that. The people have you know, the ideas about arrangement, or you know, maybe you should not sing the chorus a second time, or have you thought about you know using a minor here? Um, I'm, I'm receptive to all those sorts of suggestions because the musicians that I've used are very creative. They've done a lot of this kind of stuff and it would be, uh, it would be incredibly e egotistical of me to go, I honestly know about this more about this than you guys. Cause I don't. Right. Right. Um, so uh, did you take up music at an early age? I mean, yeah, teen, teenager, 16, maybe something like that. High school band type thing. Yeah. What yeah. was uh, what was your impetus to go into music? Whoa, wait a minute. What are you, what are you asking there? What brought him to music? Okay. <laughs> what inspired him to go into music? <laughs> I'm just what messing. do you think impetus? You, you know messing. what impetus means. <laughs> so what, got, what you got? Yeah, what was a catalyst for you? What was Sorry, I, I read a lot, so I have a vocabulary. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, it's hard to say. You know, I love music, and at some point, I... I bought a really cheap guitar. And I don't know if you remember Kent guitars. They were uh, old, very difficult to play because the strings were so high off the fretboard. But it was acoustic a place, it was or electric? A place, it was a place to start. Was it an acoustic or electric guitar? That was an electric. Yeah, that was an electric. And, uh, yeah, but the intonation was horrible, but you know, it was loud. So. Self-taught? That's what or? that age, right? basically self-taught I, I was lucky when i was younger to have uh more experienced musicians around that would show me things. yeah but more often than not i just figure it out yeah i mean I, I i got this sg about a year ago and i i tried to play it a little bit you can't see it it's on the but it's, thing what did it what did tim, our, our our friend tim was a guitarist and he told aaron that he could never play guitar because of his fingers or something he, he, he said it's he, it's hopeless you'll never play guitar and i believed him unfortunately yeah <laughs> what, what, what was it i mean that they're too short oh, yeah my my pinkies were, were too short i guess or too weak or something 
I couldn't I couldn't hold down a certain string he was telling me to hold down. He said, forget it. And it's hopeless. You're never gonna play guitar. Well, you know, you gotta, Ryan... you gotta get your 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 finger weights. Get um, you know, <laughs> yeah. get one of those stretch things. Yeah, could have gone could have gone Django on it. That's what you I was gonna say. I mean, he only he only had two fingers on his left hand, and he's still one of the best jazz guitarists of all time. Yeah, so absolutely sometimes you can do it. You talking about Jan- Django? You, you got to Django Reinhardt. Django, yeah. Django Reinhardt. How badly did you want it? Right. That's what it comes down to. There's all kinds of stories, like like Tony Iommi lost two fingers, and it, yep. it you know he created his own sound basically. Jerry Garcia is missing most of his middle finger, but I think that's on his right hand. Right. And some people type with two fingers. You know, people find ways to adapt. <laughs> you know? I'm a two finger typist, and people are amazed at how quickly. Yeah. I can, you know, get those two fingers going. Well, didn't Hendrix take a right-handed guitar, turn it upside down, and restring it? I mean, yeah. that, that's the whole thing with him, right? So. That was his first guitar. Did he restring it? Lefty. Yeah, I don't think he restrung it. I think he just put it upside he down. He, he played oh, like, yeah. you, know, you know who Dick Dale was? Yeah, yeah. the Dick surf Dale guy. The Deltons. Yeah, he did the same thing. He just took the guitar and just flopped it over the other way and kept kept playing. Mm-hmm. which which makes which makes their work even more remarkable mm-hmm. yeah yeah that's what yeah, I'm, I'm i'm a lefty and um when i was in junior high uh they did have a left-handed guitar but the uh the music teacher couldn't stand watching people play left-handed guitar and couldn't stand like you know bad guitar apparently <laughs> so he shoved me and another student, a guy I had a crush on, um, into the storage room and had him try to teach me guitar. And um, it didn't it didn't pan out. A, he wasn't interested in me. So the crush didn't pan out. And B, uh, uh, my pinkies are actually deformed. I was born that way. And then uh, my fingers were not strong. And so, you know, we had like three weeks or four weeks where that was going on. And, you know, so, of course, I never learned guitar. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, I'm tone deaf. That doesn't help. <laughs> I'm literally tone deaf. I've been tested. Yeah. It's not one of those things where I just say that. Yeah. I've actually been tested. Yeah. Well, there are notes that I just cannot hear, which is probably why I'm not the music person in our group you do you do good probably a good reason yeah Mm -hmm. well Well, i'm a good actor tim uh long way back to town that's one Mm -hmm. in the articles that i read that kept coming up that song Mm -hmm. um so let's go ahead and play a little bit of that and then we'll come back and talk a little bit more Oh. 
So, I mean, where did where was like your taste in music born? Was it you know we talked about high school and everything like that? But I mean, uh, you know, post high school and as you're getting to be a young man, you're going to law school, obviously. You know, did you hang out at the uh, you know off campus clubs and stuff like that, sure. or sure. And, yeah, so a lot of local groups. And, yeah, um, I've always been lucky to have friends really from the time I was in elementary school who really liked music. And back then, it's like they had their older brother's records. You know, we, yeah. we wouldn't have had our own records like that probably at that age, but there they were. And, mm-hmm. we and just Phil had his them. sister's records, but same thing. Yeah. yeah, play them over and over and over again. And, you know, time goes by, you listen to the radio, you listen to other people's music. I, I had a couple of roommates in college who both love music. One of them, uh, is, is actually in a band down in Sarasota. And he's been very, everything I record, I run by him because he's got really good ears. And uh, we've so, been to Sarasota. Mm-hmm. Hmm? We've been to Sarasota. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it was nice to have two roommates who had, we shared a lot of the same taste, but there were a lot of areas where we, we hadn't heard, you know, each other's records. And so yeah. it was a great opportunity to just, put something else back then it was a turntable uh with, with crummy yeah. little speakers uh, oh yeah and listen to uh you know listen to whatever we were doing and it seemed like i guess we studied sometime but we seemed to have an awful lot of free time <laughs> to sit around and listen to music uh and it was Beautiful. it was really it was really a, a wonderful time you know this was in dayton no i went to miami university for okay for, so uh, oxford 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 yeah okay that's an awesome campus that's like really isn't that where Great. uh <laughs> isn't that where Michael went, Miami? No, he went to Mount St. Joe. Oh, okay. But Miami was just a really Your nephew. Nice little campus, little college town. And he got his yeah. uh BA in um uh, I think biology. Yeah. yeah. He wanted to do research. So so what what years was this? Is like uh, I graduated from Miami in 75. Okay, so that's like our groove. I mean that we're talking about um Aaron mentioned Steely Dan, Blue Oyster Cult. Led Zeppelin's going strong in 75. Led Zeppelin's going strong. Yep. Allman Brothers, Marshall Tucker Band. The Who. The Who. Yeah. The Who. So, yeah, that was like a great. That's, Man, that's easy top. Right. Right. Now, you did the little local places. Did you come down to Cincinnati, like Bogarts? Uh, yeah. Cecilia? Bogarts. I've been to Bogarts. I saw, I don't know if you guys are familiar with a band called The Blasters. I am Perhaps. not. Uh, the, the, it was led by two brothers, Phil and Dave Alvin. And it, it's like the best sort of roots Americana music ever. And Dave Alvin is now on, he's, he's doing a solo thing where he calls it his guilty men. And uh, they were, we have a free concert venue here in town called the Levitt. And um, he was there about four weeks ago and it was just, it was fabulous. But first time I saw the blasters was at Bogart's. Okay. Nice. Bogarts. Um, yeah, I've been there a couple times. Right. Yeah, I used to work across the street from Bogarts at a bar called Dollar Bills. And we, yeah. Yeah. We had a we had our own live music every night, but we'd also get a lot of Bogarts crowd, and we you know the our crowd would vary depending on who was playing at Bogarts every night. I think that's pretty typical if you're that close to a venue. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Prince played Bogarts once, right? Yeah, and that he's the fav- the famous Prince uh, incognito concert. He kind of just showed up, right? And- he he. Uh, well, what it was was they did advertise it on the radio uh, that day. It was a yeah, it was a a, a surprise thing, and um, he played. They listed them as red and blue, and uh, they they were hinting on the radio all day. You you'd hear them saying. Uh, yeah, you guys need to come to Bogarts tonight to listen to Red and Blue. You're gonna love it. I promise. You're gonna love it. And it so turned red and out blue is purple, Prince. I guess. Kind of right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Prince wanted to kind of feel his roots. Yeah, that would be unbelievable, wouldn't it? If you had yeah. no idea. Yeah, if you just showed up and Prince comes out, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah. Can I play my guitar?
lot of there were quite a few people and i believe it filled up yeah but you know it's only 1500 people i'm sure it filled up yeah probably and plus there were people who were just bogart's devotees who who come all the time regulars right right (laughs) that sudsy malone's was there too right next to right across the street actually was it next to it or across the street just across the street yeah yeah had had the but, same owner as Dollar Bills. I worked at Sudsy's a couple times too. Okay. Did you? Yeah, Sudsy's. Uh, I don't know if you're aware of Sudsy's, Tim. No. Uh, it, it's okay. a laundromat and bar with okay. live music every night. Oh, really? Um, no, no cover, no cover charge if you bring laundry. Right. Yeah. Was what crazy. was the cover charge if you didn't bring laundry? It's usually five bucks. Oh, okay. It was crazy. Party up front and. Uh, whole back in, in the, the back. back, you know, it was, it was crazy. Yep. It was pretty cool, though. It was like, look, it was so small. It was just like a little storefront almost. Yeah, it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't super big. You could, like, you'd stand outside the, the mm-hmm. uh, place and you could see the band like five feet in front of you through the window. Now, did you only do bar yeah. work, Aaron, or did you actually address laundry issues? Um, no, I, the couple times I worked at Sudsy's, I just stood behind the bar and mostly mm-hmm. opened cans of beer. At, oh. at Dollar Bill's next door, it was all bottles of beer. That's mm. kind of one of the subtle differences between the two. Yeah. Okay. You got to have something that makes you unique. That's yeah. right. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you got to know whether you're doing the bottles or the cans yeah. when you're going into yeah. work. You know? And they both had taps. Mm-hmm. But yeah, not, not a lot of people ordering mixed drinks at Sudsy's. Mm. So what's the best concert you ever been to, Tim? Um, many years ago, I went to a concert at the Nutter Center, which is the... Uh, kind of the, the indoor arena up at Wright State University. Mm-hmm. And it was um, it was like there was no publicity, no nothing. And my then wife and I got there and there was, you could just stand on the basketball floor. I actually could touch the stage. And the, the opening group was the Ryan Setzer Orchestra. And the lead group was Bob Dylan. Oh, and, awesome. <laughs> and I don't know how many times you guys have seen Dylan, but there's good Bob and bad Bob. Yeah. I mean, I, I've seen a concert where he just sort of indifferent to the audience. You know, it's like you could be here, you could not be here. I don't care. But at that concert, he was inter, you know, he was interacting with the audience. He would smile. His band was tight. That that stands out as being maybe the best concert I ever saw. Yeah, I saw Dylan at Riverbend. And it was like August, and he was dressed in black leather, head to toe. Had to be hotter than uh, than you can imagine. And um, yeah, because that's outdoors. Yeah, yeah and toward the yeah. toward the end of the second set, the people in the lawn charged the pavilion, and it, it was kind of chaos. And uh, they just quickly left the stage, and uh, just the concert abruptly ended. Wow. Yeah. That's bizarre. That would, uh, that's what I would do. That's not Cincinnati. What you thing. Think? Yeah, that's not a Cincinnati. Yeah, we know thing. where, we know, it, well, that's we know where it where happened, man. I was there. And, <laughs> well, I know. I just, that's not your average yeah. Cincinnati, you know. They yeah. started going the other way. Good last show, night. still. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they were kind of man. leaving last night. Yeah. Well, um, mm-hmm. so let's play another one of Tim's songs off this yeah. fantastic album. Okay. Um, Jenny's song. When we come back, we're going to talk about that song a little bit. Big black limos and last week's tears Closing the books on 25 years So many words that won't be spoken Wondering why your heart's not broken It's time to say a prayer and drop the bar
expected to hear the phone number over and over again, 865-309, but that's not it. Right. Yeah, that's like a thing where even people who aren't into music like like me know that phone number. Right. right. Okay. Or they associate it with Jenny. Jenny, yeah. Jenny. And the phone Jenny. company, oh, at least around here, actually gave out that number to somebody. Uh, I guess somebody who wasn't aware. And uh, like a week later, they they were like, no, <laughs> you have to give me a new number. Same area code and everything. Well, the 513. Yeah. Yeah. What's the area code on? Uh, I don't think they mentioned the area code in the in the song. They do not. Yeah. Okay. Because it, it wasn't a thing back then. Well, there were area not codes. But... Well, I know, but it wasn't like if you were lo- like now local, you have to dial your area code. Whereas back then, you didn't necessarily have to. Sorry, go ahead. So is Jenny is Jenny yeah. uh, someone uh, from your, that you know or somebody you want to talk about? Or <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, Jenny and I dated on and off. Right now it's off. Um, mm, but it, it's her story. I mean, that that song is, with some literary license, is, is true. Uh-huh. Uh, she, was, she was married to a guy who wasn't a really nice guy and uh, but he had really serious kidney disease and you know, I went through dialysis for years and I think she was widowed at 42. And so that's what got me the idea for the song. And I had the, you know, the, 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 the tag at the end of the chorus is Jenny, go on out and find your man. That, that lyric had been bumping around in my head for 30 years. I just had no idea what I was ever going to do with it. Well, yeah. then I got a Jenny and I got a story and that's, that's what happened. <laughs> Nice. So the, the lyric even had Jenny in it all that time. What? Your lyric even had Jenny in it all that time? It, well, that was the only lyric. Yeah. Was Jenny, go out and find your man. I, I had no idea what I was going to do with it. And then I started hanging out with her, learned her story. And I thought, okay, I think when I, I think I got something to, to use this way. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. It is cool. So that's definitely a autobiographical personal song for you, something that's meaningful to you. Well, and, uh, Jenny's uh, biography uh, so a mild connection to us I am currently on dialysis oh, okay. so. mm-hmm. I, hope, I hope that goes well um uh, it's been going great when I get the dialysis I feel great I have more um uh, more control you know of of how I feel and I I have more energy so I was pretty sick uh, but I didn't realize how sick I was because it built, you know what I mean? And once I started the dialysis, I, I was like resistant and resistant, and resistant. And I finally realized I was nauseous almost every day. And I didn't want to get to the point where I was um, actively nauseous. So, yeah, yeah I started. It kind um, of crept up on you. you know, yeah. One, one yeah. ailment built upon another and you just handled it as it went along until you had this big i had this big realization that i just needed to do it and uh once i did things have been things have been better like i feel better um yeah yeah she's she's definitely doing better right now i i actually feel like exercising again and i mean it was by my second treatment i was like yeah. <laughs> yeah right. Fall energy. Yeah, also, my appetite's back. I was I was maybe I was forcing myself to eat like twice a day. And Philip would make dinner and I'd eat like half of it. Yeah. And in the morning I'd eat a couple of eggs and, and literally force a piece of toast down. And and that's keto toast. So it's like 80 calories. So I was getting like 200 calories for breakfast and like maybe three or four for dinner. But I also wasn't losing weight. So that was interesting. All right. Uh Okay. Enough Uh, said. No, no, no. No, Thanks for asking. I'm glad, you know, you are doing a lot better. It's it's really good. Yeah. It's it's great. Mm -hmm. Um, Easier on all of us. Yeah, I'm 56 and and, um, they're talking about um, there's some work I got to do to qualify for transplant. But they're talking about because I'm an excellent candidate except for my weight, so I got to lose some weight. Uh, but uh, but yeah, they said that there are people uh, at that dialysis center who've been on dialysis for like 20 years. 
So right. I figure, you know, but I want to switch to home dialysis. Well, you know. So Tim, I was wondering, uh, I guess we wind down here, I guess. I was wondering, you, you don't really tour now, but did, do you have in your background any experience with live music or, you know? Oh, high school and college. But high school and college. About. Played any uh, honky tonks down in Texas or anything like that? Like no, 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 any, nothing. Any Blues there. Brothers band situations? <laughs> <laughs> That, that, that's what we're intimidating. We, we, we yeah. like both kinds of ma- uh, music, country and Western. Right, right. That's right. Well, yeah, Blues Brothers. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's that's the thing that would intimidate me the most, I think. You know, I think I would enjoy, like, I'm a creative person. I think I'd enjoy writing music and learning how to play, my, you know, play, if I could play, I'd enjoy it. But getting out in front of the crowd, that's got to be the grind. Like ZZ Top, I was thinking about this. I was looking at this shirt I bought. They played mm-hmm. Saturday, Sunday, Monday. It's like mm-hmm. all the travel and you know going out there and playing songs that are forty years old, and mm-hmm. and then on top of that dealing with whatever may come up at a live event. That would be the most yeah. Stressful. And um, Albert, millions of dollars you, they're giving you. Yeah, yeah. millions so, of dollars. How the hell are you going to save all that? Or Al- you Al- spend all that? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But, uh, yeah, if we win the lottery, the first thing that would come to Philip mind Philip's mind is taxes. And uh, oh my God, it's you know now what are we going to spend it on? And he'd want to put it in a savings account and just leave it there. Well, I'd find out if I could buy the baseball team first, and then yeah, we're not winning that much. Well, anyway, um, so yeah, like we really enjoyed the album. Um, Yeah, you know, is are you working on any new projects? You working on the next one? Um, No, I'm I'm spending some time trying to you know promote this one. Yeah. Um, I mean, I got an, I've got a couple of things. I've always got something going on, but I don't have at this point. I don't have a plan uh, other than to try to get the word out on this one and see yeah. what happens. I mean, the, the production values, everything like that, is just re- really tight. It sounded really good. We had another date, and you heard of Ludlow Creek? Sure. Yeah, we had them on. Uh, it must be something about Dayton or whatever, because their their stuff is really tight as well. Really, they, they were here historically too. a big music town. They were here two weeks ago. Yeah, oh, cool. oh, okay. yeah. They played at the the the, Levitt, the, uh, the open air theater. Nice. Uh, we should, we need to catch. Oh, uh, uh, what was catch the name up. of that uh, gentleman we talked to who did music, and then he had a ranch where he would have Richard live Lynch. Richard Lynch. Do you know him? Or of I do, him? I do not. Okay. Yeah, he's a country he's, western. He's not a Dayton yeah. though. No, well, yeah, it was right outside Dayton. Oh, well. Or yeah. central Ohio. He's got well, like a, a a farm or a ranch just north of Dayton. Yeah, just southern. I don't know. I don't know where it was cool. exactly. It's, but it's yeah. not quite the Dayton. No, no, but but yeah, and, and it's a mostly country <laughs> venue and um, west. and sometimes they have live music there. Yeah. Well. Mm-hmm. All right, Tim. Um, anything you want to, you know, plug and website? Yeah, where, where can where can people find your album? Uh, it's on all streaming services: um, Spotify, Apple Music, everything. Mm-hmm. And I found that if they want to find it, the best search is actually type in "Last Hope for the Modern World." Sometimes "Midnight Sky." Either there's there's a whole bunch of entries or too many things. So, so if you if you uh, type "Last Hope for the Moss," yeah, that seems uh-huh. to be the most sure way of getting to the getting to the music. Oh. Your name's Timothy Ty T Y E. Tim yeah. Ty. Mm-hmm. Tim Ty. Yep. Tim Ty. All right, Tim. As we go out, I'm gonna play it a little bit of uh, the song that I really um, kind of took to, and that one's "Way Out West." I looked outside and saw a sign Every little thing's gonna work out fine Hey, hey, hey Vermilion cliffs, azure skies Fourteen thousand feet reflected in your eyes Hey, hey, hey when you take a chance, life's a dance, push it every night and day. Way out west where the eagles soar, my girl and me in a four by four. 
storm in the mountains and buzz in the shore. Playing the game where I'm the only one keeping score. The Milky Way. Well, we asked Aaron to do a review of his show. Should we do one of ZZ Top for a minute? Sure. Or you got a minute? Oh, you got a minute, Aaron? Sure. Okay. All right. So I uh rumor spread around. We we heard good things about Texas Uncle Cracker, Town. but we ended up going late because of the heat. Um and, and we were we didn't realize we'd be in a covered area. We thought we'd be Uncle, on the lawn. Uncle Cracker, now so there was another know, opening band. There's yeah, Uncle, Uncle Cracker, Cracker, Skinner, and mm-hmm. uh ZZ Top. Yeah. Got so it. we heard that Uncle Cracker did well. Um and uh ZZ Top was banging. I mean, or, I mean, Leonard Skinner was banging. I mean, it was just, uh, you know, they had patter. There, there may have been a little too much patter. You know, he kept talking about, you know, yay, Ohio. And, he kept playing up to and, Skinner fans. Right. At Cincinnati. Right. Yeehaw. Cincinnati. Oh, yeah. yeah. And then he did. Okay. So was, the, there, was uh, there a Confederate battle flag? I, I did not see that. No. Yeah, but he I did. don't think they do that anymore. Not not on stage, but it 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 actually did feel a little um a uh, God and country Christian, it maybe did. even a little bit into the MAGA, you know. Oh yeah. Well, just a little. Uh, but it, it you was you could extrapolate that. I mean, when you looked around the when you looked, pulled it back a little. When you looked around, there were more skinner shirts. Right, you know, everybody could see me. There were bandanas and Skinner shirts, Mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, you know, so it was a Skinner crowd, that's for sure. Yeah, and it was it was a little bit louder. It was a little bit more personality. Um, Yeah, when when ZZ Top came out, it was almost kind of uh, it was so much lower key. Well, let me say a little bit about Skinner myself. Okay, all right, yeah. (laughs) So your turn, Johnny. Johnny is. Leonard is a uh, Ronnie Van Sant's brother. Okay. So the the only surviving member of uh, Z- uh, Leonard Skinner mm-hmm. passed away recently, and he was mm-hmm. their a guitarist, and I can't think of his name mm-hmm. for the life of me. But um, so when we arrived at the show, they were right in the middle of their set, and it wasn't just the heat that we. I, I, I don't think it was the middle. Because we went to dinner. Yeah, it was, <laughs> we went to dinner, and we missed- but we went to dinner late. To yeah. avoid the earlier right. show, part no, of the yeah. show because of the heat. The heat was an issue. We left the house we late because to, of the heat. Yeah. So when we showed up, uh, Leonard was right in the middle. Leonard Skinner was right in the middle of their set. And mm-hmm. um, they were playing all the hits. They hit at, uh, Give Me Three Steps. They played. Uh, mm-hmm. um, I don't think they played Needle and the Spoon. Maybe that was earlier. I think they played 38 Special or. Mm-hmm. Is that the name? 30? I'll tell you exactly what they, they played. Play after we got they there. opened okay. with Working for MCA. Okay. And Skinnered Nation. Okay. What's your name? That smell. That smell. That's when we arrived. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you got there on the fourth song. Yeah. yeah. I Know a Little. Whiskey Rock a Roller. Saturday Night Special. The Ballad of Curtis Lowe. That's honestly the only song I'd have wanted to see. Tuesday's Gone. Simple Man. Give Me Three Steps. Yeah. A J.J. Kale cover, Call Me the Breeze, mm-hmm. Sweet Home Alabama, and the encore mm-hmm. was Freebird. Right. Right. And I went to the bathroom during uh, Freebird because I knew that I could get in and out real quick. Because uh, nobody was leaving during that song. When they, What know, song is it y'all want to hear? <laughs> mm-hmm. So, yeah, it was right before... It was right before Freebird. You know, everybody... It's true. Every At every concert, the whole... Skinner uh, Army starts uh, Skinner s- screaming "Free Bird," of course. You know, mm-hmm. and I thought they they sounded really good. You know, Thea calls them a, a cover band but because none of them are actually Leonard originals. Yeah, but mm-hmm. uh, I think he's got some he's got some skin in the game because he's Johnny is Ronnie's brother, mm-hmm. at least you know. Yeah. But it's supposedly their last tour. I I wasn't that into it. Cheryl and Lisa seemed to like it more than I. Yeah. Did. Yeah. Very jingoistic. Yeah. Yeah. And then I liked the ZZ, ZZ Top came out. Once you got that set list set up? Yeah. Um, got Me Under Pressure. Yeah. I Thank You by Sam and Dave. Waiting for the Bus. Jesus Just Left Chicago. 
Give me all your lovin', pearl necklace. I'm bad, I'm nationwide. I gots to get paid. My head's in Mississippi. 16 tons, the Merle Travis cover. Oh, yeah. Just got paid. Sharp dressed man, legs. Then the encore was Brown Sugar, Tube Snake Boogie, and LaGrange. I assume Brown Sugar's the Stone song. I don't think so. Because that's what I <laughs> thought when I look at a set list from a previous show. But I did not recognize, but I did walk away. I had told them, I said, okay, we were talking about, it was getting late. It was like, okay, we want to beat the rush out of here. We're old. We got wheelchairs and stuff. So we, we should get out of here. I said, I want to hear LaGrange before we go. <laughs> turned out to be their last song because the set was only like an hour and 10 minutes it yeah it was short yeah it felt like they weren't on stage hardly at all it was like really they're done yeah already 16 songs that's not bad it was good i mean it was good skinner I, I, did 14 songs they did two songs more, more than skinner did i um i expected i expected to not notice having not ever seen dusty hill uh-huh. i expected not to notice that he was missing but I felt like that the the the, the uh, bassist there's a learning curve and he's not quite there yet. I felt that like could be some of the stuff mm-hmm. and and it, they had one moment during I can't remember which song where they actually seemed to stop for a millisecond to get their bearings together. So hmm. I wouldn't say it was terrible. I mean it was good, but uh, that for somebody like me to notice those those technical issues, they they probably themselves would say it was a little bit of a, a sloppy yeah. one. Yeah. Okay. How was Jesus just left Chicago? Uh, head down to New Orleans. I can't say I, I, I'd have paid more attention if uh, I knew it was so important to you. I see. I didn't know the song that well going into the show, and it's a it's a fish staple. I was there when they played it. Yeah, but fish also covers Lagrange sometimes, but honestly, they don't do a very good job of it. Really? Well, I mean, Mike's vocals just sound kind of funny. That's all. Yeah. Rumors spread around <laughs> in that Texas town. Oh, sorry. Well, there you have it. It's, it's always our... a fun song, though. I mean, it is. It is. The guitar and his <laughs> rocks, you know. Mm-hmm. Really it, it seems to be consensus over time, you know. It seems to be the consensus uh, banger for ZZ Top. Yeah. Yeah. They didn't what? do cheap sunglasses, did they? No. No. That's that's the only glaring omission I see here. Right. If I wanted if I wanted a ZZ Top show, all the songs I want to see were on your set list, except for cheap sunglasses. Yeah, but it's one of those bands that uh, I can't say that was all. You know, I I liked them when I was really really young. You know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And uh, well, that's when they were popular. And then I sort of. Mm-hmm. didn't listen to like, it for a long time but it's still like early 80s really, yeah. really 83 good. to 85 yeah like they opened for hendrix things you liked from the 80s please aaron they opened for Jimi hendrix oh wow yeah billy gibbons no you know new hendrix okay i, I think heard he that. yeah he talked uh he talked to marin about it mm-hmm. oh i gotta listen so to that this, this episode sponsored by wtf <laughs> 
Oh, awesome. Yeah, I didn't know that was out there. I'll have to listen to that. Yeah, there's did, a Billy Gibbons episode. It was really good. He did talk about, uh, he did mention Hendrix during the show. In a few years now, probably. So it might not be, uh, might not be free anymore. Oh. Okay. Might need to be, uh, might need the full Marin to get that. Then I won't, I won't hear that one. Then. <laughs> it might be out there, though. You never know. Never Could be know. in the YouTube. All right. If I yeah. find it, I'll forward it. All right. Cool. I'll look for it myself. All right. Well, thanks for your report. Yep. Sounds like a good time was had by all. And uh, yeah, you you were able to avoid Mr. Cracker, Uncle Cracker. Yeah. Uh-huh.